It's Tuesday, August 10th, 2021, and we are live from Hickory, and it's country-ish. Alan! Get the country, boy, and he's making it good. He was Jaws underdog, dressed in beaver rolls, living next to the wood. He liked to eat the sushi, but he don't even fish. Not so much a country boy, it's more like he's country-ish. Moved out of his green and headed for Southern Cal. Wound up a TV and film, making popsicle proud. Now this country boy is back with his family. Got himself a podcast, he knows it'll last, cause he's in Hickory. That's right, I am from Hickory, and I'm happy about it. I hope you're happy. No matter where you are. What up, bumpkins? You're about to watch and or listen to episode 89 of Country Ish. And we got a sloppy, a spicy show for you today. Very funny comedian Justin McKinney is going to zoom into the show here in a little bit. Stay tuned for that. We got dancing cowboys, Cuomo talk, Karens, and Florida food fights. It is a dang mess today, but uh, you're going to love it, so stick around. Um, but I want you to know we're not just live. We're a good old podcast for your ear holes. We're on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, uh, iHeartRadio, Pandora, Podbean, you name it. But uh, we are live. Facebook, okay, Twitter, YouTube, and now Instagram. That's right. We are now live on Instagram, and it might look weird If you're watching this on Instagram, because we switch cameras in here from time to time. Right now, you're just looking at me. Should be fine, you know. But then at some point, we're going to go to a wide shot, and you're not going to see. Look at there. That's probably weird looking if you're on Instagram. But we'll try not to linger in this shot too much. Uh, There we go. So that, uh, you know, I know know what you want to look at. (laughs) So we're good. And, um... We got people checking your comments live, so leave uh, leave some comments down here from time to time. I'll go to the intern, and I'll have him read a comment, give you a shout-out. So let me ask you a question. Answer me this. You ever been in a food fight? I want to know all about it, because our small-town news story has to do with a food fight. So answer that question down there, and uh, I'll ask my intern uh, over here at some point to uh, read your response to that. Uh, yeah, so let me go to my intern sitting over here. we got one guy tonight, and that's all we need. Mr. Mark, have a ball. How are you? Doing good. I just figured I'd just go ahead and just take over it all. Yeah. Well, you look good over there. We've got your country ushed up. Uh, you're, you're checking YouTube, I believe. And Facebook. And Facebook. So and if, then, you, um, if I miss a comment, just understand I'm toggling. Yeah, he's toggling, so don't worry about that. May, we have a sound effects machine over there. If you feel so inclined from time to time, you could play a sound effect. <laughs> there you go. That's a good move, too. Hold it up to the microphone. Yep. Um, you're bleeding right there a little Emma. bit. Oh, yeah, wow. I, just, I just noticed it. <laughs> I, thought, I, just I thought I would give you a, a heads hey, up thanks. before we go to that camera. <laughs> 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 All right, so look, <laughs> perfect timing too because I'm going right to him. Uh, take a sip of beer and swash yeah, around. Just yeah, just wash around. Uh, all right, so that is Mark Havaball over there, and um, you know we're growing in numbers a little bit every day. And it's because you guys are doing a thing. You're sharing it. And I love it. I mean, I'm up to like 209,000 people on Facebook. And it's because you guys are hitting that little share button down there over here, I think. And uh, I want to encourage you to keep doing that. And in fact, what I'll do right now, I come up with a thing to remind you and to reward you for hitting the share button. It's a thing that I came up with where I just look right down the barrel of the camera, you see. And I'm not going to be that entertaining at all for the next 45 seconds, 
probably 30 seconds. I'm going to beg you to hit the share button. It's a little thing I came up with. It's called the share stare. I'm going to look right at you. If I could make you share, I'd ask you to do it today. Please hit that arrow button that points this way. I want you to hit the share button. I need you to hit it now. Oh, see, it's a share stare. Yeah, you like that, don't you? I know my buddy likes it sitting across the table. <laughs> Let me get to him. I'll introduce him right now. This guy's a very tall gentleman. Clock's in around 8 feet, 37 inches tall. Used to play basketball, a little pro ball for the Charlotte Hornets. Played with Kelly Trapuca. Some people call him the Flyswatter back in the day. Uh, I like to call him the Southeastern Man of Mystery. I'm talking about Mr. Sebastian. How are you? Fantastic. Good to see you. Yeah. Got a little injury, but it looks good now. Yeah, better. Yeah. Last I, minute, sometimes that ha- happens. Injuries. Marcus likes to point it out when I got his yeah, set. Yeah. You know, I got something right here. Yeah, we're, we're, it's live, brother. It's we're live. We're, we're, we're in the moment. We're, <laughs> yeah, you're bleeding all out from here. your show. You're putting it out there. It's good to see you. Good to see you, brother. I want to thank you, number one. Okay. Because because of you, two people I want to thank real quick. We got this new country-ish sign back here. I don't know if y'all... Instagrammers, I think this is all you can see in this shot. <laughs> Everyone else, there's the new sign. That was made <clears throat> by Brian Powell at Etched. That's the name of his company. It's Etched. And his website is etchedlaser.com. Did a great job there. Now, that's the first thank you. Second thank you little company called Service Hub, and I appreciate them because they came in here, and that if you notice it, it's kind of floating in midair. It's on a uh, TV mount, yeah. and we've got a TV mount here. We've got one over here, one over here, and that is thanks to my buddy Sebastian uh, and the people, the good people at Service Hub. So thank you. You're very welcome. I appreciate it. We that. had a good time doing it. Yeah. We only messed up three or four times. Well, you know, you can't tell. Ah. It's off camera, so it looks good, and I appreciate that. Um, but, yeah, I, I missed you this past weekend. I really wished you was with us. I know. Because we went, and we were in your hood. There's a fly in here, and it's going to die at some point. Yeah, probably during break. I'm going to make a prediction. Alan, at some point during this uh, podcast, mm-hmm. YouTube show, Instagram show, Twitter show, all of it. I'm going to catch the fly. Okay. Ninja. Mark Havaball, if you find chopsticks anywhere, <clears throat> let me have them because I, oh, I could use two troll pins. <laughs> so that sucker's going down. Anyway, I wish you were here this weekend because we had a good time in your hood, Newton. My town. Your town, Newton, is blowing up, dude. Mm-hmm. We had, it was a block party. Yep. And me and uh, I feel like everybody else but you was there. I know. And we there was this awesome band playing at Novel, right? And Novel's great, by the way. It's it's in Newton. It's, they got I don't know how many beers on tap. But 30, it's a lot. 40, it's a lot. Oh, is it on Ciders, tap? yeah. All, yeah, all on drafts tap. on cider. All drafts, beers. ciders, beers. There's, like, there's over 50, I think. Anyway, we went there, had a good time. We saw this band, this blues band playing. They're from Newton. Uh, I think the lead singer's name is J.J. Hips. I don't know if this band is called J.J. Hips and the Hipsters or whatever, but it's J.J. Hips. And they were playing some awesome blues music. And there was this dancing cowboy. And, you know, Stamos was supposed to come in here today. I got two people flaked on me today. Isn't that sad? Sad. Stamos. And Wes Pittman, both of them. Can't make it, dude. Sorry. Where's the commitment, boys? Hmm? <laughs> Look who's here. That's I'm here. Look who's over here. Right? Where are you at, anyway? It's because when I play basketball, if you, you when I play basketball, if you missed your thing, so they put somebody else in your place. Right? Yeah. You. That's be why you play hurt again. when you play hurt. You, you play, play down. That's, that's right. right. You play hurt, and that's what we're doing. You're playing hurt. I'm playing hurt. Yeah, I got blood <laughs> bleeding. A little bit of an injury, but he is here. Here. It doesn't look that bad. I keep okay, bringing thanks. it up just to make you sick. <laughs> I'm now I'm nervous. <laughs> I'm trying to look at Instagram. I'm uh, nervous. No, you look fine. <laughs> um, but there's this dancing cowboy there, and I thought we should show a little highlight. Uh, I want to show you what you missed at Novel. Oh, can't Check wait. this out. Go ahead and play that, uh, the Alan Jackson. I'll talk over it a little bit. This dude was getting it, brother. 
He had them fancy jeans on. He had a belt with bullets around it. Oh, and he was just kind of, just kind of hopping around. He, you know, he's having a good time. There's a little cowboy hat on. Got the eagle shirt. And I feel like he was having, he sort of led everybody else to have a good time. Because he got up there and was one of the first ones to dance. Now, this isn't really line dancing music, but you find the rhythm, dude. You can do whatever you want. And I like the way he looked. He had a happy smile about him. Yeah. He had a big old toothy smile. It kind of reminds me of a Mater from Cars or maybe Shrek the Donkey a little bit with this, the big smile. Yeah, there's JJ Hips. And I like their guitarist too. Oh, the footwork. Watch the footwork. Look at the footwork on this guy. He, did, he goes in a circle and then he makes look, a circle. Look at Stamos trying to learn this dance with him. Yeah, I, like I was trying to get him to move out of the way. I'm like, Stamos, I'm recording. We have gold here. Get your Hawaiian shirt out of here. But, yeah, we had a good time with that guy. And uh, so he got other people dancing. And I believe I have another video of the Alan Jackson. We can just go to this other video. This older couple got up there, man, and they started dancing. And I am oh, old. Oh, yes. <laughs> yeah. Yes, so I've seen these people dance before. Oh, then you already know the yes, power. I know they have. There is power right here. Whenever you're ready, the Alan Jackson. Look wow. at the legs. Yeah, look at that. Look at the flexibility. Look at there. Look at the happiness. Oh, That's he's joy. It's, he's full of joy. And the lady, she's got moves as well. Yeah. Now, I don't understand this move with these shoulders. Now, I do oh, like that. Yeah. That's a good old, that's old school uh, breakdancing yeah. move as well, as well. I mean, that's just a classic good move. And he's flexible, and he got the legs going. See, I'm always envious of old dudes who are also flexible. I think he drops it like it's low. I wonder if he's... Now, you've seen him dance before. Yeah. Right? Would you say that they're inebriated or any on any kind of substance? Uh, no, I would I would say that's no there's no substance required for that. That's just pure joy. That's pure joy. How about on that a natural high. Behind him there with yeah. the George flip flops. Yeah. And the fan blowing his hair the whole time. I know. <laughs> <laughs> Looks like a white snake video, doesn't yeah, it? That's good, the Alan Jackson. So we had a good time at Novel. I wish you could have been there, buddy. But, uh, yeah, we'll have other, other good times. Yes. Yeah. I'm going to be there next time. Um, Mark Haveball. Yes, sir. Has anyone answered the question? Sure did. Food uh, fight question. All sorts of various stuff from getting hit in the face with pepperoni and different uh, things like that. But the most interesting one was from uh, Scott Richard. said he tried to start a food fight in sixth grade. Screen food fight, threw mashed potatoes at a teacher, and silence took over the room. So the teacher took said student out. Oh, uh, yeah, I feel like because of Animal House with John Belushi, <laughs> if you're going to start a food fight, you have to make the announcement. You have to stand up and yell, food fight! Yeah. Then throw the yeah. whatever. Well, he was the definitely case. committed. The rest of the class wasn't. <laughs> yeah. So you got to, yeah. other people need to be in on it. Otherwise, you you're, just, a, you're, you're just the, an a-hole. You're, 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 you're a lone wolf. You're stuck. You're stuck. <laughs> And you're just making enemies, you know. Yeah. But uh, our small town news story has to do with that, so stay tuned for that. I think it's time to move on to our first segment. Oh, also, we're trying to keep the show around an hour. That's a new goal of the show. Sometimes we go pretty long, and not everyone gets to watch the whole thing, but I'm, I'm hoping if we just stick it to an hour, maybe everyone will stay on board and and watch the whole thing, and don't forget to hit the share button. So let's move on to our first. Oh, also, <laughs> if we, if you're watching this on Instagram, and then uh, if we go over an hour and it just goes away, that's what Instagram does. Okay, so we're that's kind of why we're experimenting with that. FYI. Okay, I think it's safe to move on. Uh, our next segment has a sponsor, and is brought to you by Hendrick Honda of Hickory. Are you the market for a new vehicle? Even if you're not, you should go to Hendrick Honda of Hickory. Uh, they have all kinds of great vehicles. I'm loving my 2021 Honda Passport. In fact, I will be driving it to Atlanta. That's my next gig. That's right. I will be in Atlanta at the Funny Bone this Thursday, Friday, and Saturday doing five shows, maybe maybe six I think they might be adding a show, which is a good sign, on that Saturday. So just know that if you're in Atlanta, know anybody in Atlanta, tell them to come see me at the Punchline um, and my new Honda Passport, which I'll be driving down there. You should go check out Hendrick Honda of Hickory. 
Sometimes they have hot dogs as well. Say hello to Batman for me. All right. So what I do, Sebastian, is I, I like to, I want people to know we're current. Well, we're, like we're live right now. Yeah. You know, what is it? It's 8.17 p.m. Uh, August the 10th as I'm talking. And one of the ways you'll know that I'm live is because I'm just going to go to Twitter and click on your hashtag, you know, yeah. see what, what's trended. What are you talking about out there? What are you talking about? And I'll I'll weigh in on it. Yeah, that way you know we're current. We're up to speed. It's a segment called Ooh, It's the Best Trends. Here's what you're talking about. All right, dude. Check this out. Hashtag Cuomo. Uh-oh. He's back in the news again. This dude. Uh, Andrew Cuomo is resigning as governor of New York amid sexual harassment allegations. Now, one of the things that uh, you can always rely on with country-ish is that we don't go deep into the politics or the pandemics. But this is what's trending. It was a number one trending thing, and he's quitting. So I have to bring it up. Hashtag Nomo Cuomo. <laughs> He's oh, out. Nomo Cuomo. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I like he's it. Out. I came up with that. Thanks. It's um, not, it's t- trademark. Trademark John Reap, uh, registered country ish. <laughs> Hashtag Nomo Cuomo. Um, what do you think? What are your thoughts on this? I mean, uh, let's, you know, let's talk I see, about it. Saw it coming. Mm-hmm. You know, 11, 12 women. I think. I don't, I'm not sure what it's up to. Could be, could be more. Could be more. Yeah. I mean, that's a, he's, he's busy. What about you, Mark Haveball? What are your thoughts on this? Do you know anything what's going on? You've been oh, yeah. busy. I've been, yeah, I've been busy, but it, I've been keeping up with that as well. And mm-hmm. the writing was on the wall with that, especially with uh, with the way the investigation was going. Yeah, um, it's, what's what's interesting to me is that his defense, what his what in defense of him, he's saying like, no, I do this to lots of people, <laughs> <laughs> not just the ones that have accused me. Of sexual harassment. Nar- I sexually harass everybody. <laughs> That's Narsman's famous, famous words. So he put up a video of him, like, you know, kissing other people, putting his arm around other people. Yeah. And, you know, he's an Italian dude. This is what his defense is going to be. He's like, I'm Italian. This is how I grew up. I'm in my, what is he, 60 maybe? 63, yeah. I think. 63. So we're talking different generation. We're talking uh, Italian, different culture. Well, they do the double kiss. Yeah. Now, got- I had a neighbor when I first moved to L.A. who was an Italian dude, and he did that and to my wife at the time, and we didn't know. That was just an acceptable thing, and they're like, "Oh, we weren't like he didn't grope her after that. He yeah. just did. That's just what they do." Yeah. And his whole family did that, so that's going to be his defense. But then again, <laughs> you know, I don't think that's going to hold up. Um, I don't know all the details. I don't have the facts, but that's the world we're living in. Maybe can't do uh, just randomly kissing people anymore. No huggy, no kissy. No huggy, no kissy until I put a yeah, yeah. wedding ring. So you have to put a ring on it, Cuomo. Yeah, yeah. So that is what is going on. What are your thoughts on this? Some people are like, "Oh, this is uh, this is kind of setting a precedent. Like if you can get canceled, fired, forced to resign before." You're proven guilty. It's a problem. That's a problem too. Mm-hmm. So I see, you know, negative po- pros and cons on yeah. b- this. But in general, if you're a douchebag, you should be canceled. In yeah. general, yeah, yeah. So there you go. Hashtag no mo Cuomo. <laughs> All right. Um, this is what else is trending. There's a new <clears throat> Karen in the news. Oh, we love a good Karen. I love a good Karen. I absolutely love a good Karen. And um, this one here, Karen was called out <laughs> for approaching a black neighbor over a Tigger flag. And it says, we, and she says, we have rules here. So what I'm going to do is me and Sebastian and Mark have a ball. We're going to watch this video, and then we're going to give you our opinion. All right, and this was on TikTok. This lady, uh, this Karen lady came over to her neighbor's house and had a... Um, a uh, strong opinion about the flag that was in uh, uh, hanging on her house. And uh, th- well, this is a TikTok video. Watch this. It says, "Watch my interaction with." How are Karen's. you? I'm good. How are you? 
I want to talk about this song. Tigger's flag. Okay. All right, hang on. Pause um, it real quick. <laughs> that word alone. <laughs> that's brave. Yeah. Number one, mind your business. Number two, it's a tigger flag. Tigger flag. <laughs> Sensitive. <laughs> right. And she she had no problem saying it. I have yeah, a problem. You're... But but you notice it took her a second to get there. Yeah. Like well, it's, it's kind of quiet. She's one consonant away from having a problem. <laughs> she is one, one consonant, consonant away. away from having a bigger problem. Yeah. All right. I'm sorry. I just had to point out <laughs> that obvious uh, elephant in the room. Yeah. Right. Go ahead, Mr. Jackson. How are you? I'm good. How are you? I want to talk about this song. Tigger's flag. Okay. I don't like it. <laughs> okay, why not? Now, I thought the American flag was real nice. Uh-huh. I don't say nothing about the shrubbery being cut. I don't say nothing about the backyard. But now, I don't like that. Okay. Oh, okay, I didn't hang that. My brother hung that. This well, I know. I'm just, I'm just telling you, I don't like it. All right, pause it, Dion Jackson. I'm having a little trouble hearing her a little bit, but she's saying, I don't like the flag. She's right out of the gate. I don't like it. Okay, well, that's tough. <laughs> and I like the American flag, she says. And she goes, and I don't say nothing about, and I think she starts naming other problems that she has. With the backyard. With the yard. <laughs> yeah. The shrubs in the backyard. Huh? The shrubs in the backyard. Is that what she said? Yeah, shrubs. I couldn't quite make it out. The shrubs in the backyard. So she doesn't. She, uh, by the way, she's been biting her tongue on that one. Thank goodness. <laughs> you know, the whole back. She's not been saying anything <laughs> about that. Um, and then the lady says, "Well, I didn't hang that flag. My someone else did. Her I, brother, I couldn't quite. I want to talk about this song. Oh, here we go. Let's hear it again. Tigger's flag. Okay. I don't like it. <laughs> okay. Why not? No. I thought the American flag was real nice. Uh-huh. <laughs> I don't say nothing about the shrubbery being cut. I don't say nothing about the backyard. Okay. But now, I don't like that. Mm-hmm. Oh, okay, I didn't hang that. My brother hung that. This well, I know. I'm just, I'm just telling you, I don't like it. Okay. okay. And, and we, we have it? rules. I don't have to, I don't, won't have to go find out what they are, but <laughs> I, I don't like that. I mean, this is right, what I'm So she's saying... We have lawn rules, and I don't want to have to go find out what they are. Well, should you figure I mean, out you the rules up, first? I think that's you, you, she got things out of order. Yeah, yeah. So if you're going to come up and Karen somebody, that's <laughs> but that's what Karens do. <laughs> Karens don't get the facts with the rules first. They think that they see something they don't like, and they yep. think it's against the rules, <clears throat> and they like to throw the word rules and bylaws out. Yeah, yeah. Okay, that, I think I'm sorry, Alan. I'm going to have to stop and start a couple times. <laughs> Let's go ahead and pick it up where it was, and I'll try and be quiet. Association, though. No, but there's rules for the community. There, there, there is called Williamsburg something, and there's <laughs> rules. Okay. So and I'm, I'm just saying I don't like it. <laughs> All right. It makes it look tacky. <laughs> makes the neighborhood look tacky. It it doesn't, but that's okay. Huh? I said it doesn't, huh. but it's okay. You're allowed your opinion. Okay. Uh huh. I'm gonna find out about it. <laughs> All right. Well, you have a good day. That's her threat. Ignored. I'm gonna find out about it. So she's admitting <laughs> I don't know. Her biggest thing is it's tacky, and I don't like it. How many times she say I, I don't, don't like it? I don't like it. <clears throat> I don't say nothing about your shrubs. Oh, your backyard? There, oh, there's the picture of the Tigger flag. Now, wow. what are your thoughts on this? Well, the wonderful things about Tiggers are Tiggers are wonderful things. That's my thoughts. <laughs> <laughs> I, said, I assume that's something that he says in the cartoon. Uh, yeah. Okay. Thank it's you. It's been a minute since I've seen it. I laughed. I just... <laughs> he bounces around on his tail. Yeah, he does. <laughs> <laughs> I love Tigger. All right. Well, um, here's my opinion. Number one, mind your business, mm-hmm. but that's what Karens do. Number two, the Karen, she's not wrong. It is a tacky thing. <laughs> <laughs> I, 
I'm on her side with the hanging of the Tigger flag. It looks stupid. Now, she's not wrong about the tacky part. Everything else, she's wrong oh, about. So if it be a pineapple or a fruit no. or something, you don't like it either. I don't like it. I don't like the cartoon flag, a flag of a Disney cartoon character. It does look tacky, and it probably does make the rest of the neighborhood look crappy. So she's probably right. <laughs> But you can't just walk up and say that. Can't, you can't, can't do can't that. Can't take people's tiggers. Mark Havelball, what's your opinion on this? <laughs> right, yeah, that's perfect. Bunch Mark. of crybaby Karens out there. <laughs> that's perfect. Uh, I want to know what you think. Leave it in the comments section. What are your thoughts on this? Did she go too far? I do like that she w- gave it a three Mississippi before she even said the word tigger. Yeah, <laughs> and then she turned around, couldn't even look at her when she said yeah. it. She yeah, she said, "I want to talk about this." Uh, Tigger flag. <laughs> I actually want to know who her husband is. Oh. And we should send him. Mm-hmm. We should which, send him. Which one? The Karen's nice. husband or the Karen's husband? Okay. Rick. Was that his name? Well, that's I'll make it a name oh. up. Rick. It has to be. Could be Darren. Could be Darren. Darren and Karen would be great. Darren and Karen. <laughs> oh, that's even better. Yeah. Thanks. <laughs> but we're you're assuming she has a husband. I would say she probably does. Okay. And I would love to know what he goes through every day of his right. life. I'd like to hear his side of the thing, the stories. Maybe he's the one that made her go over. No, I doubt it. No. Uh, he's Karen, like, that's her, your instinct. He's like hiding. Yeah. He's embarrassed. I'd also like to talk to the uh, the lady's brother who hung the flag. She yeah. tried to, if you notice, she tried to throw the blame on the brother. Yeah. Well, I didn't do that. My brother did that. Yeah. She's like, well, I don't like it. <laughs> I don't like it one bit. <laughs> Uh, anyway, that's in, That's what's in the news. This is what people are talking about, and it is August the 10th, 8.30 p.m. All right, we got to move on. Uh, today is also National Lazy Day. I don't know if you know that. <sighs> August the 10th is National Lazy Day. It gives us permission to relax and kick back, and I was going to write a whole thing about it, but I just ran out of gas. Well, thanks. Mr. That's what you Stamos know who, is doing today. Right. <laughs> Did I beat you to it? <laughs> no, that's good. Yeah. Mr. That's Stamos. what Stamos is doing. Our good friend Mark Stamos. See, today. I'm he's just now lazy day. It. That's why he's not here. He, he saw the, the notes. He's <laughs> honoring National Lazy Day. Leading by example. Yeah. yeah. Okay. All right, let's move on. We got we're, we're at 30 minutes, and we got, we got more show to do, so we got to move on. Um, I got money to give away. That's right. right. I got a Screen Actors Guild residual check. I got one, two, three, four. Five of them sitting Five right here. Five of them to choose from. And I'm going to let uh, Sebastian open one at random. And here's what I do. Uh, I get paid for acting gigs I've done in the past. It's called residual checks. Every time they air something, they got to pay you something. I made a game out of it. I'm going to open one on the show, uh, tell you what it's for and how it's airing. You make a guess. And I'm going to take the uh, three phone calls at random. And whoever guesses the closest wins the check. I'll sign it over and give it to you. It is a game <clears throat> that we like to call How Much Is That Screen Actors Guild Residual? Check. All right. All right. Sebastian, pick one at I'm random. I'm one. Bam. Slide it over. Here's the check. I'm going to open it off camera where he can't see it. And then I'm going to read it. And then you guys, uh, we're going to do some in-house guesses real quick. Ooh. Ooh. All right. And then um, y'all will read my poker face on their guesses. And when you call in, you know, try to uh, let that uh, help your guess. All right. So uh, there's a phone number, right, the Alan Jackson? So if you want to play the game, go ahead and start calling this phone number. And here in a minute, we're going to pick three people, and we're going to get your guess. And someone's going to win this residual check. Uh, But first, I'm going to go to uh, Sebastian here. I'm going to tell you what it's for and then how it's airing, right? This is a check for one episode of Jane the Virgin. Jane the Virgin. Your favorite Mm, show. I love Jane the Virgin. Yeah. I watch right after Tigger. (laughs) <laughs> this is your second favorite episode. Uh, it's chapter 68. Jane the Virgin, chapter 68. Not 68. Yes, thank it's you. your second favorite. That's right. Second favorite. Um, this is internet rental, electronic sell through. How much is this? Green Nitrous Covers. $11.79. $11.79. Mm. Mm. I'm going to say it, a little pessimistic. 
Should have went higher. Wow. Mark, have a ball. How much is the Screen Actors Guild residual check? I'm not going to go extremely high, but I'm going to go about sixteen seventy seven. Sixteen seventy seven. Still, both of you pessimistic. Hmm. You got to think more uh, happier, better than that. <laughs> um, I'll give a random clue. One of these numbers is my high school football jersey. Boom, that's the only clues. Now, D. Allen Jackson, is there anybody in the bullpen? Yep, we have a few people. Oh, cool. Let's take someone at random. Let's get them in here and let them take a guess of the residual check. Let me know when they're in the room, and we'll figure it out. Can they do better? Hi, John Reap here. Who am I talking to? Hi, this is Tom. Hey, Tom, where are you calling from? I am calling from uh, Spring Mills, West Virginia. Spring Mills? Spring Mills? Yes, sir. Okay. West Virginia, do you happen to know or <laughs> did you know that West Virginia is the only state in the country that has a middle name and do you know what it is? I don't. What it is it? What my is God. It? My by God. God yeah. West, West by, by God, God West Virginia. Virginia. It's one yeah. word. My God. Anyway, Tom, well, I appreciate uh, you. I'm, 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 I'm about a stone's throw from Maryland, so I'm barely West Virginia. Uh, uh, yeah, that's what they say yeah. in West Virginia. They'll just say, oh, no, I'm actually in Maryland. Or, no, I'm closer to Virginia. I'm closer to Ohio. <laughs> no one wants to claim they're right in the middle of my God, Virginia. <laughs> that's all right, Tom. I appreciate that's you right. calling in, brother. What do you do for a living? Uh, I'm a retail manager. A retail manager. Ooh, what do you retail? Are you allowed to tell me? Uh, uh, currently clothing. Oh, yes. Well, let me know more because maybe I will try to get some of this clothing. Well, it's discount clothing. So it's, uh, it's Gabriel Brothers. They they buy a lot of like overstocks and stuff. And okay. we sell them at a really cheap price. And I got you. me to do that. Well, good. Thanks for calling in. Have you ever watched Jane the Virgin? No, but I've watched you since you've been saying, is that a Hemi? Oh, yeah. You remember and that? I love I, yeah, I, I watched that. I've watched a lot of the movies you're in. I love your stand-up. I listen to your podcast oh, on a guy. podcast app every week. Oh, this is my man. first time actually watching you live and calling it. Wow. Well, Tom, I appreciate that, brother. We are now live on Instagram as well, starting today. So this is a new day uh, for everybody. Thanks for calling in. How much is this Screen Actors Guild residual check? I'm going to say $18.52. All right. Lock them in. eighteen fifty two. All right. So far... He is winning. Yep. He's, <laughs> well, winning. he's the only one who's called in. No, but, but even with you guys, he's better than he's us. beating you. Yeah. And I'll tell you, he's ticking in the right direction. Good. Not there yet. Think of my high school football jersey number plus some change, and that will be it. Uh, the Allen Jackson, let's get someone else on the horn, uh, and let's figure out if they can do better than my man Tom from West Begot. Hi, John Reap here. Who am I talking to? This is Irma. Irma? Yes. Oh, hey, Irma. Thanks for calling in. Are you uh, half of the owner of Max and Irma's? No, uh. not me. Okay, must be a different Irma. Where are you calling in from? I'm calling in from Asheville. Asheville. Irma, God. That's <laughs> right up the road. Yep. Uh, yeah, not too far. Yeah. How's Asheville? Beautiful as always. Yeah, yeah, it's beautiful up there. Say hello to Andrew Killian for me. All right. <laughs> Hi, Andrew. Oh, thank you. Well, this she did yeah. it. Hey, Irma, what do you do for a living? I uh, work at an electronics plant. Uh, what now? I work at an electronics class? Electronics plant. 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 Yeah, Tyco Electronics. Oh, okay. Thank you. See, anytime someone tells me what they do, my brain goes to how can I get something from them. 
Like I with the retail she, clothing, I'm yeah. thinking, well, maybe we could get some country. I thought she said cottage cheese plant at first, and I was thinking, <laughs> man, that might be good. We could get some of that for the shit. Some John Reed cottage cheese. I gotta be honest with you, I'm not a cottage cheese guy. I'm not either. But if someone's gonna give it to me for free, I might take it. Be a sponsor on the show. I talk yeah. about it every episode, <laughs> like Hendrick Honda of Hickory. <laughs> okay, Irma, uh, how much? Did you watch Jane the Virgin? I did not. Mm. Well, do but you I have to watch you? No, <laughs> <laughs> thanks. I appreciate that. Remember, you're you're swell. Um, mm. Can you tell me how much is this Green Actors Guild residual check? I'm going to say twenty seven dollars and eighty seven cents. Twenty seven dollars eighty seven cents. Put her on hold. The Alan Jackson. So far, she's winning. She's winning. Still not. She didn't. Know, she didn't know your high school football number, or she didn't hear me say it yet because yeah. she's on. You know, she's like a delay. But right, that's not two my high things school. that I know people are not watching your high school games and Jane the Virgin. I, I would recognize <laughs> that right now. Both right, both. right. Yeah. Well, my two high things. school football days, I was John the Virgin <laughs> <laughs> because ah, we were good. so bad. <laughs> that's not uh, that funny, Mark. Have a ball. <laughs> All right. Oh, that's hilarious. The Ellen Jackson, let's get one final person on here. You're the last caller. Who am I talking to? Christina. Christina, where are you calling from? Ohio. Ooh. OH. Yeah. <laughs> You're not from Ohio. <laughs> Transplant. No, I am. <laughs> OH. Yes. Uh, nope. You're supposed to say I O. I am from Ohio. Oh, see, yeah. see real people who are actually from born and raised Ohio. If I yell out O H, they yell back I O, <laughs> and you did not do that, Christine. My my bulldog had me distracted, so oh. I was a little distracted. Oh, uh, maybe <laughs> he, maybe he's not from Ohio then. Well, Christine, I appreciate you calling in. Are you Christine with a K? Or a C-H? Or is there more than one way to spell C-H. it? C-H. Okay. Um, Christine 16, one of my favorite Kiss songs. Ooh. Christine, the movie about the car that attacks people. Also a good movie. Lots of yeah. great Christines out there. You know what I mean? Christine, what do you do for yeah. living in the O-H-I-O? Oh, I'm working on a lot of things right now. I'm trying to get my Bulldog March started. Bulldog, what? March? Merch? Merch. 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 Oh, well, what kind of things would yeah. you make for your bulldog? Uh, magnets, shirts, all kinds of stuff. Oh, yeah. Bulldogs love magnets. <laughs> <laughs> so, not for them. Oh, I see. So it's not for other bulldogs. Stuff. These are for humans who love bulldogs. Yes, and to help with their their care, they take up a lot of of treats and food and yeah. kind of everything. Does your what's your bulldog's name? Uh, I might have quite a lot of them because me, we lost our mom, so I raised them from birth. So, oh, so you have I, uh, your bulldog breeder, possibly. Yeah. Okay. Well, no, no, no. One time, <laughs> one time, I did. I bred them. Oh, okay. And then now I still have all the pups. How many bulldogs are in your house right now? Well, that's why I need to win the money. You see, I'm trying to get stuff moving. All right. Uh, you got seven? There might be eight. 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 Okay. Look, eight bulldogs, and they're hungry dogs, dude. Yeah. You they know? eat you. Eat you. So, um, that's crazy. Yeah, I'm. Uh, well, I'm trying to think. Like, uh, who's Georgia's the Bulldogs? Yeah, and they beat Ohio State all the time. <laughs> That's right. No. How come you don't raise Buckeyes? <laughs> <laughs> Buckeyes are poisonous, though. Oh, oh, are they? Yeah. So I had some Ohio people bring me Buckeyes one day at Applebee's, and I thought they were good, but then they told me they were poison. And they tried oh. to kill me. Okay. Well, maybe Bulldogs are safer. Yeah. Okay, Christine from Ohio, who loves Bulldogs <laughs> and magnets and merchandise. Uh, this is okay. for one episode of Jane the Virgin. How much is this? Screen actors go to the check. Uh, 20, I mean, like $2,088. Hmm. 2000. Wait, she said 20 and then she changed it to 2000. 
Which one do you want to go I with? I meant. <laughs> Y'all got me nervous. Why don't you pick a number in between 20 and 2,000? She's smoking them Buckeyes up there. I don't know how they do. <laughs> no. Oh, my goodness. Um, in between there? Yeah. Right. It's a lot of options. Uh, <laughs> gosh. That's a little hard. Uh, I'm trying to think my old number I was thinking. 1832. All right. $18.32. Put her on hold, the Allen Jackson. I'm going to hand this check off to my intern, Mark Haveball. He's going to hand it to the Allen Jackson. Allen Jackson is going to crunch the numbers because he's a smart man who's good at mathematics. Oh, I'll get some comments on Christine here. <laughs> and then he's going to tell me who actually won the check. We'll get him back on the show, and we'll congratulate them. And uh, and then I'll give you the real amount Can't of the wait. check. Now that I've given you, Sebastian, the clue of my football jersey number. Oh, this could be bad for me. Hey, uh, <laughs> hey John. I can see yes. which, um, which Which number were you looking at? Oh, this again? <laughs> yeah. I was looking at the, yeah, before, the, one on taxes, the first page? before taxes number. Okay. Yeah. Which one would you like for me to go with? Well, that's what I was basing all of this on. So we're going to go with that one. We're going to go with the And then I'll taxes. also congratulate. Because that the check will be a lot yeah. less than, okay. Yeah. So here's what happened. I've done this before, and I should have looked at the check. Um, sometimes when I get paid for residuals, uh, it's either to my corp, which is Grin Reaper Inc., or sometimes I forgot to give them that info, and it just goes to John Reaper, and then that's when the taxes get taken out. Oh. So there's a number before taxes and after taxes. And uh, you know what we'll do is we'll 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 congratulate two winners probably. I don't know. No, I don't know the, what it's, it's going to be. Same person, same person. Closest on both. Okay. All yeah. right. So that really does. The point is moot. Moot. One of the best lines in a in a, a Rick Springfield song. Yeah. The point is moot. <laughs> Okay, right, I'm going to bring the winner in. Bring, get him in here and let's. Oh my gosh, it's way different. Let's get him in here and talk to him. Hi, John Reaper. Who's this again? This is Irma. Irma, is it Irma or Arma? Irma. Spell it. I R M A. Correct. I was quizzing you. <laughs> It is <laughs> Irma. You passed that test as well. That's two things you've won so far. The spelling of your name game and the residual check game. Your guess was how much? Her, her guess was $27.87. All right, $27.87 is a great guess after taxes. But that's not the number I was playing with. And don't worry, you're going to win the check. My high school football number was 40. So... The uh, amount of this check before taxes was $40.42. After taxes, it's a grand total of $25.76, which is way closer to Irma's guess. Congratulations, Irma. What are you going to do with all that cash? I don't know. I'm going to go to Disney World. Disney World. I might get you a parking pass. <laughs> That's about yeah, it. Well, congratulations, Irma. You sound giddy over there. Uh, um, my grandson is so excited because I won. Well, congratulations to you and your grandson. Um, what I need you to do now is go to countryish.com, go to the comment section, fill that out, email it to me, and then I'll get your information that way off camera, and I will send this to you in the mail. Okay, Irma? Awesome. Thank you, John. You're welcome, and uh, you're welcome, everyone, for this free content. Um, but we got to take a quick break, and we'll be right back with more country-ish after this. Hold on. Hey, everybody, it's me again. I just want to say thank you for listening or watching this podcast. You know, we couldn't do this without supporters like you. Oh, wait. Are you not a supporter? Well, you could be. It's real simple. Go to countryishpodcast.com. Click on the word support. That will take you to our Patreon page. That's our support page. And from there, you can support us in many different ways. There's uh, different levels. You got $5 and up. You got Pewter Pro, Rhinestone Level, 
Executive Zirconia, all the way up to Platinum Elite, and all of them come with different rewards. We're talking hats, t-shirts, ginger beard masks, even be a guest on the show. you got to check out our Patreon page. Go to countryishpodcast.com, click on support, and thank you. Hey everybody, John Reap here, and I want you to go cruising with me, not in our cars, but on a ship. Yeah, let's take a ship together. It's the Reap's Peeps Comedy Cruise, November 6th through 11. This year, we leave out of Port Canaveral, Florida. We go to Private Beach in Haiti, where they have the world's longest zip line over water. We're going to Nassau, and it's five days, baby. I'm doing a podcast, I'm doing karaoke, and I'm doing stand-up comedy, and we're even doing Diamond Dallas Page Yoga. So get on the boat with me. Go to johnreap.com, click on the Reap's Peeps Comedy Cruise, and this is the t-shirt you get. Isn't that something? I'll see you on the boat. And we're back. Thanks for hanging in there. Uh, Don't forget Justin McKinney, uh, who's going to zoom in here in a second. I believe he's leaving some comments. He's excited. So I don't want to keep him waiting too much longer. But first, I got to show you this. You know I do another podcast Mm. with John Heffron. And um, I'll show you a little clip of it. You know, you go use the bathroom if you feel like it. Um, Maybe this would be a good time if you hit the share button. Uh, But, yeah, uh, I like John Heffron. I think he's hilarious. And we'll be doing shows together. But uh, he happened to be in Nashville. And he, uh, he zoomed in from his phone in Nashville. And check out this little clip of Heffron and Reap. I might have, I might be on stage and right now. Yeah. Well, don't uh, worry about there it. Oh, there's James Gregory. Okay. Burt Kreischer. Yes. It's Charlie uh, Murphy. Charlie Murphy. Yes. Okay. Who's that? Is that Handler? Okay. Keep going. Um, Joe Rogan. Okay. Went to Austin. Okay. Uh, John Panette. No. Yep. Yep. Uh, okay, so we still have room for other people. We got uh, Earthquake, uh, Arnez, Arnez J, and, okay. and Henry Cho, and Mitch, Mitch Hedberg, and mm. I don't know who. Oh, is that jo- is that Joey Diaz? Is that okay. Joey? Okay, okay, they're pandering at this point. They're pandering. They're it's pandering. a little bit of pandering because Joey is not na- Rodney Carrington. I totally get. <laughs> Get out of there, John. <laughs> That's is, is there Oh crap. There's there's more. Dude, I'm gonna be late for my set. Dusty. Oh, Dusty Slade. Oh, yep. Lavelle Crawford. DL Hughley. DL Hughley. Aisha. Leanne Leanne. Theo Vaughn. Bill Burr. Polly Shore. Bill Burr. I'm really John. I've been going to this comedy club my whole career. Uh, my feelings are hurt if I'm not in there somewhere. And I just wanted to see this wall to see if there's room for me anywhere. And I saw a little spot on the back, but it does suck. It hurts my feelings. Right? I've been going some there them, my whole them, life. Some of them, they, they just went to iTunes number one pod. Uh, like podcast, and they grab the first ten with no. Yeah. I'm exhausted. I'm exhausted. <laughs> okay. Oh, this is I'm great, folks. Go. We're getting a live a live view of what it's like if you go to Zany's Comedy Club. Andrew Santino, they've replaced me. Uh huh. All right. Uh, I might be on stage, but yeah, some of these I don't I don't know. I think we should we should at least get it. Like I could be on your back on the wall. <laughs> yeah, I think what I'm going to do is the next time I'm in Nashville, I'm going to take an old black and white headshot and just tape it to the tape it to the wall. I'll do it. Can I get in this? Huh? Um, yeah, dude, some of those people on it. Right, I guess. Right. I mean, some of them lived in Nashville for a couple of weeks. So why would you not? All right, dude, I'm going in. All right, have a good set, John. 
Yeah, we're backstage now. John is walking from the green room uh, to the to the showroom. Uh, we went past the kitchen. We went past the bathrooms. And someone is on stage now. I can't tell who it is. But there's Ron White, Tater Salad. That's right. You've got Bill Engvall, mm -hmm, a young Bill Engvall, Bob Saget, Sam Kennison. Look at all that. Larry the Cable Guy, Tim Allen. Yes. Jay Leno. Look at that. Young Jay Leno. Bill Hicks, Jerry Seinfeld. Yeah, I, I do believe my headshot is in there somewhere, but I would be I would like to be added to the wall. It's weird yeah, to me. Gonna, it's kind of like a Hall of Fame. It's for me that wall is the Hall of Fame, and that is my favorite comedy club to perform in. Yeah. All right, dude. I gotta go. I think I'm on All stage right. in a second. Have a good set, bud. Miss everybody. See you. All right. Thank you, John Heffern. I won't on that dang wall at Z Zany's. I feel like I've earned my spot. And there, there's vacancy. So I think they could squeeze me in. Fingers we'll, crossed. We'll sneak you in there. To me, that's the Hall of Fame. I'll put, I'll put a little picture of you up, a little Polaroid. <laughs> I'll take it, man. Look, I don't want to keep this guy waiting any longer. He's already left comments during this live broadcast, so I know he's waiting. He's in the he's in the Zoom room right now. Let's welcome him to the show. This dude is hilarious. He's like a northern version of me in a weird way, mm. without a beard mm. and a Boston accent. Please welcome. Who's zooming? I'll tell you who's zooming. Justin McKinney. Oh! And here he is right now, the very funny Justin McKinney. How are you, brother? I'm doing great, John. Thanks for uh, having me on. This is great. I do. This is what I love about you. One of the many things I love about you is um, if I were born and raised up north, I feel like I feel like we could swap, and a lot of people wouldn't know the difference until they started hearing just the accent. The and accent, of course, you're better yeah. Looking. But I, I think our worlds are similar, right? Yeah. Yeah, hundred yeah. um, percent. I want to introduce. I mean, for those of you who don't, who haven't seen, if you've been living under a rock and you don't know Justin McKinney, he's one of the greatest stand-up comedians out there working today. Uh, <laughs> you and I also have a lot in common. Uh, we have great dad stories. I, I know some of your uh, some of your great material is about your dad. Yes. Yeah, I mean, my dad had. Uh, I mean, my dad at one, put it this way at one, he was a homeless alcoholic for over a decade. Mm -hmm. He Yikes. was actually living, living in a pay toilet at a parking garage. Oh no. Um, yeah. And when I tell the story now, I, he's been sober now for going on 14 years. Good. So an amazing recovery story. But at the time, uh, yeah, he was living in that, you know, I would talk about it on stage about, you know, he, he used to brag when he lived in the pay toilet at the parking garage, he would brag that he had a place that had a 400 car garage. <laughs> you know, like he, 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 I mean, he was, he was that kind of character. Um, That's but good. one of the stories I remember from my childhood that, that people might, might've heard me tell before was. Uh, I was home and my dad had gotten mad at the, uh, at the bank because they wouldn't give him a loan. Uh -huh. So this is like middle of the day. Um, and all of a sudden he comes running down the stairs, you know, in his underwear, gets in the car and just peels out. Right. And, uh, and whenever that happened, it was always like, all right, is he going to come back? Is he drinking? Is he going to get in an accident? Are we ever going to see dad again? And I'm about 11 or 12 years old at this time. Right. So he's gone for about five, 10 minutes. My phone rings. It's my buddy, Alan, that lives across the street from the bank, right? And he goes, hey, is your dad home right now? And I remember, and I knew he wasn't because I saw him go out the door. And I go, I don't know why. He's like, I think I just saw him throw a brick through the bank window in his underwear, oh, right? Oh, no. And I'm literally like, ah, you know, he said he had some errands to do, you know? <laughs> like, it was, I didn't want, 
anyone from school to find out, you know, that was the whole thing. Will my dad embarrass me? Yeah. And like when my kid, for, like, I'm just like, please don't tell anybody at school, yeah. you know, but they, the police would raise the drawbridge in our town. So we couldn't escape over, you know, after fifth grade, I moved from Portsmouth, New Hampshire over to Kittery, Maine, which was two miles away. My house was two miles away, but I was in a whole other state. Okay. And it was separated by the Piscataqua river. So there was a uh, the drawbridge. The police would literally radio and raise it because they'd be chasing my dad. I mean, that that was the crazy. That's just the beginning. I mean, I've got a million stories, but yeah, yeah to say I've got some dad stories is an understatement. <laughs> that is awesome. Um, I remember well, I was watching a bit not long ago where you're, you're talking about your dad would. Uh, what was the phrase? And he would do a kick, but he couldn't kick oh. that high. Yeah, wise ass. Well, yeah, you know, wise go, ass. Yeah, he'd go, you wise ass. And he'd do this little kick. It would only go about up to my shin because he used to take karate back in the day, but now he'd been <laughs> drinking so much, he could only lift his foot like four inches off the ground. You know what I mean? Wise, which is funny. It's like my dad, you know, used to have a black belt. And the other day I had to bring him a hernia belt. <laughs> like, I'm, I'm not lying. I, I believe it, you. I believe, I I'm just, I'm, I'm trying to go. My brain it's is my racing Instagram. because I've got so many, I, I'm really comparing your life and my life. Okay. So my dad also, uh, yeah, he wasn't a troublemaker, but you were a deputy sheriff for a minute. Well, how long? Seven years or something? Seven years. Yeah. yeah. And yep. my dad was a deputy sheriff. Oh so, yeah. My dad also took uh karate, Kayo oh. Kashinkai karate. Oh, wow. Uh, I think it was amended. Mandat- I think the, the sheriff made all of his deputies take this karate class. And so I oh, had to yeah. take it, too. Um, so I'm just drawing those comparisons. Now, do you think you becoming a deputy sheriff, like your dad, uh, had anything to do with that? Like, you know, you thinking like, well, I don't want to be like that. So I'm going to go the other way. Well, I think there's some truth to that. And, you know, your dad being an officer, the kids of cops, a lot of times they either go they become cops or they go the other way. Right. And, uh, and, and I had said that before, had my dad been a cop, maybe I would have gone the other way and been a criminal who knows. Right. Yeah. Um, you know, and I think, uh, you know, when I was on the tonight show, I think, uh, one of the lines I did on there was I, I was destined to become a cop. I grew up around all cops. They're always over the house arresting my dad, <laughs> yeah. you know, so they were always there. You know, I knew all the cops, um, yeah. you know, but, uh, but yeah, I think it, you know, I don't know. It was, it was weird because I, at a young age, I knew my dad was wrong. You know what I mean? I mean, he would just, you know, there was this, you know, when I was a little kid, uh, I used to watch chips. Yeah, of course. Like my, my favorite show. And, and, uh, the police came over one time because the dog was loose and they wanted us to, the neighbor called about the dog being loose. So I let the policeman in the house. So he's just standing there and he was, I just remember him being really nice and he's showing, I'm asking him questions about stuff on his belt, you know, (laughs) couldn't have been nicer. And my dad comes barreling down the stairs, get the, you know, out of the house, the cop like backpedaled. I'll never forget the look on the cop's face as he backpedaled out of my house and like shut the door and was like, uh, make sure you get your dog. It was like one of those weird things. Yeah. And I remember as a little kid going, huh? (laughs) <laughs> who was, who was, what was the right behavior there? Right. Was, what was that? Why was dad so, he was trying to help us, but your dad was thinking like, oh, I got warrants. Well, it, well, it was just, he saw the uniform. Yeah. Right. You know what it I mean? I felt a, bad. My, my buddy, Rob, I didn't want him to come over the house when he became a Cub Scout. <laughs> right. I didn't want to, I didn't want to chance it. That's a, yeah. Well, so uh, what made you want <sighs> What made you want to become a deputy sheriff and why did you quit? And what were some of the great moments and some of the bad moments of being a deputy sheriff? Um, well, I think why I really wanted to do it was, uh, you know, to make a difference, you know, to be quite honest. I mean, it was the whole, the protect and serve thing was, was really something that I took, you know, having a family, my whole family had run-ins with the law. I mean, they all been arrested for different stuff and, and because of my family's perception of cops made me be like a really good cop. You know, yeah. like I, I could remember when I, they were, you know, I did the oral boards for the hiring process. They're like, you know, asking me questions. And I said, um, you know, I, at one point I brought up that I would treat everybody like they didn't like cops. They were my family, my dad. How could I change their mind? Yeah. You know, so, and that's how I went about it, you know? And, uh, and a lot of the guys I worked with were like that. And, you know, look, what's going on now? I have to take this to a serious place, Yeah, yeah. but it's, it's really sad because, you know, we talked about the, you know, the kids of cops going down that path. Well, I was talking to a chief of police not long ago. He went to a training seminar 
And the guy asked all these, all these higher ups, the supervisors, how many of you are going to recruit your kids, your, your family to go into law enforcement? Not one of them raised their hand. And that never used to be, you know, right. now it's like, I mean, you can't win. So it's, you know, I'm really hoping there's, there's something happens because, you know, it's, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's kind of crazy, but, oh, and to your point, you're asking me about, I'm going to tour with a whole show next year, uh, called diary of a defunded deputy. Whoa. Because say it again. I was, I, I was defunded. There were two of us for 14 towns, 500 square miles. Like you want to tell, like, be careful what you wish for. Right. <laughs> um, like the training and the calls. I mean, you know, they, they, we, I did a hundred hour course and then I was thrown out there with a police car and a gun, hundred hours of training. Hairdressers have to go to school for like two years for cutting <laughs> blows, you know, right. yeah. and I'm out there crash course, you know, I got to call Hey, help deliver a baby. I was like to where, you know what I mean? And they're like, Oh, to like birth. No, I'm like, I don't remember that class, you know? Oh my gosh. Yes. I, what, uh, so where do you think you get your sense of humor from? Do you think it's mostly mom, dad, somebody else we don't know of? Where do you think it came from? Well, from what my mom passed away when I was six, by the way, that, okay. that was part of two, my dysfunction, right? My mom passed away. I'm left with my dad. Right. I mean, that whole circus and my aunt moved in. It was my mom's sister. It was a whole big, whole big deal growing up. Um, but definitely, uh, my mom, I heard was funny. He used to like to be the one to tell jokes. And my dad is funny in his own way. You know, mm -hmm. my dad would say things like he'd always try to look on the positive side, but it would be like, we had, when we moved from Portsmouth into Kittery, when I was, uh, after fifth grade, we lived on the river there. I mentioned the Piscataqua river. We had big river rats, like would be in our house, like oh. running right across the living room floor. And my dad would be like, ah, the good thing, if you got rats, that means you got no mice. <laughs> that mean? It would it'd be like that kind of stuff. You know what I mean? And we would just laugh at that, you know? And, and I got to tell you, um, you know, me and all my brothers get together and we just tell stories about growing up because I mean, they just never ends. And you um, do the same thing, right? It's yeah. like, so here we are. My dad's there. All my brothers. This is about two years ago, two and a half years ago. We're all just ripping on the, you know, the basement would flood and all these stories about no heat and the power night. And then all of a sudden my dad, after about 30 minutes of this, my dad just laughing. and he all of a sudden stops. He goes, let me just say this. And we're all like, wait, my <laughs> oh, dad. he's got go. words of wisdom, right? He goes, it wasn't as bad as it was. <laughs> and, and it was just like, we all laughed like in a weird, you know what I mean? So uh, how many kids now? I got two. Two kids. 11 and 13. Two boys. Yeah, you have a new special out called Parentally Challenged, yes? I do. Is that about the the, the hardships Be, of parent yeah. <laughs> parentally challenged? <laughs> yeah. um, and it's on Amazon Prime now. Very yeah, good. Check now. that I got two out. two specials on Prime. You got two right now? Two specials on Prime, yeah. So that's one. What's the other one? On Midlife Support. Okay. So you got the best titles, dude. Like, even if I don't watch it, like, I'm, I'm amazed. I like a good title. I'm, yeah. The, you're on country-ish. I stole that from Blackish. But um, it's but it's good. It's genius because it immediately, you kind of know what it is. And it's, you know, it's it's like taking uh, Ist after something successful, right? Like the Nerdist. Right. Right? Yeah. Like, Ooh. if I was like New Englandist. Oh, yeah. That would be, you know what I mean? That's not bad. That's not bad. New Hampshireist. Start you know, thinking of a title for our thing and what we're going to do. Oh, oh, yeah. here's another thing. You can either thank me or yell at me about this one. Um, you at one time had Tom Brady. Now you have Cam Newton. Thoughts? Oh, well, I mean, <laughs> look, I was, I've been a Brady guy. I know. Uh, all along. And Brady, um, you know, everyone always asks, is it Belichick or Brady? And just watching every game. I mean, you have to, I watch every game, every play to see Brady come from behind I felt like a thousand times, like every time it's like, how can you not be like, this guy is just unbelievably great. Um, so I wanted them to stay the fact that he's gone to Tampa. I know new England's split. I think most people are rooting for Tom. I mean, how can you not? He gave so much to us. Oh, he's yeah. like, I think he's like ours and we loan, we loaned him. He's, you know what I mean? He's still new England. He still belongs to new England. Oh, yeah. I want him to go down as the greatest ever as I think he is. Um, so to replace him with a guy that can't even throw a football, I mean, last, <laughs> I mean, Cam was throwing it at the feet, you know? So, um, that was rough. Well, so see, you, I'm glad to hear you say that. I get, I get, um, you know, yelled at from uh, certain Panther fans from time to time, because I've always been outspoken about, uh, Cam had two good seasons. That was it. And yeah. sadly he got hurt. 
And if you uh, if your shoulders bothering you, if you got a bad ankle and you can't throw the ball, then you can't be the quarterback. It is that right. simple. No yeah. matter how great you like the guy, how pretty he looks, the fact that he thinks he's Superman and he does some dabbing, that's all great when you're winning yep. and you're making first downs and touchdowns yep. and completions. Yep. I called him highball cam because he was throwing highballs that last – I mean, some at the feet or over the head. And so I'm with you. I was rooting for Tom Brady and the Buccaneers, and I hate the Buccaneers because they're in well, the NFC South. Well, let me tell you this. I took uh, – when I knew Brady was going to go to either Tampa or the Chargers – so I bet a hundred dollars on each to win the Super Bowl before it started. So I had two twenty. I made twenty five hundred bucks. No kidding. On that Tampa Bay, I didn't take it out. Like I could have, I could have made twelve if I pulled it out before the Super Bowl. But I'm like, I'm riding Brady the whole way. Dude. So uh, yeah, so that that paid some bills. Yeah, maybe we have a sports show together. I don't know. Possibly. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I love I love talking. You know, I did the Showtime special with Rob Gronkowski. Oh, that's right. Yeah. What's what's that guy like? He's just like what you see. Yeah. That's what you know, I figured. It's uh, you know, getting there it was a big frat house environment type thing. Everyone's just going wild, you know, dra- you know what I mean? It was just a wild. Yeah. It was it was Here, crazy. So I was a little edge. That's on showtime now and dirtiest set I ever did because I, I felt like I had to fit in a little with his <laughs> crowd. So I kind of <laughs> right. spiced it up a little bit. <laughs> right, uh, right. But uh but he was nice. He signed jerseys for both of my kids, but uh, you know. Yeah, did you see? Have you seen it? Have you seen? Uh, I knew that that show existed. I did. And he did more than one that one episode. Didn't he do like a season of that or something? Right, like different uh, shows. No, I think he just did the one. Just did the uh, one. Okay. Yeah, and so he did ten minutes of stand up, and 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 my opening joke. I mean, if you, you get, I, I basically said, I go, how great is Rob Gronkowski? Everybody, my kids love Gronk. In fact, my seven year old for Halloween went as Rob Gronkowski. He got to the third house, hurt himself. He was done for the year. <laughs> so that was, you know, so the, I mean, it was. It, it, it was a lot of fun, you know, to do. <laughs> Dude, see, that's brave because anytime I've done any kind of comedy with professional athletes, uh, and they're funny when they're not in front of a camera and they like giving you uh, shit, but they can't always take it. You know what I mean? Some of them got thick skin. Like, uh, you ever watch the ESPYs and someone's doing something funny? Yeah. These guys, they don't always. Well, Actually, what I say, John, is I thought Gronk was going to deck me, but luckily he didn't get the joke. <laughs> right. Oh, that's priceless. <laughs> uh, and I believe that. I believe that. <laughs> I'm serious. <laughs> I mean, I don't think that's a joke. Um, yeah. That's great. Well, let's stay in touch for sure, my friend. For and sure, everyone, man. Yeah. If you see Justin McKinney's name anywhere out in this country at a comedy club or a theater, you make sure you get a ticket and go check it out. Go check out his website. He's got tons of funny videos on YouTube as well and uh, Amazon Prime. JustinMcKinney.com. That's J-U-S-T-O-N McKinney.com. And speaking of my dad, that's I asked him why he did that because it's been a huge pain my whole life. This is a true story. I'm like, Dad, why did you do it? He's like, because you were born just on time. Get it? <laughs> and I'm like, are you serious right now? And it, it could have been just into it's the same dumb joke. He got the joke wrong. So that's my dad's <laughs> sense of humor right there. That's all right. Thank you, Justin McKinney. I love you. Thank you, John, man. You're the best. Keep doing it, man. Oh. Woo! Justin McKinney, dude. How funny is that guy? He's hilarious. I can't wait to do more stuff with that dude. We have a lot in common. We just sound different. Yeah. That's that's really it. So thank you, Justin, for doing that. And, of course, it was live. <laughs> I appreciate you changing the background real quick. Well, I do. I'm right a wall changer. Before we started the wall change. And, uh, I do wall change. And I appreciate you, Mark, have a ball for taking pictures. That was the flash you would see yeah. from time to time. Yeah. So, yeah, we're 100% live all the time. <laughs> uh, look, we you guys are hitting that share button, and I appreciate that. We're up to – well, my goal was 50, and we're yeah. over it. We're at, like, what, 50? 50, 58 on Facebook. 50, 50, two more. For Get six oh two more. For, might as well keep hitting the share button. I appreciate y'all doing that. Um, yeah, so uh, we got one more segment. Our goal was to go under an hour. We're at nine. We're at an hour and eleven minutes. <laughs> and I don't want to breeze through this next segment because it's funny. It's interesting. And uh, well, hang in there. And I appreciate you doing that. We thought Instagram would cut us off by now. I thought. 
once we got to an hour, it would just end, but it's still hanging in there, I think. Right? Mm-hmm. Are we still on Instagram? Still on Instagram. Yeah, we're live right now, baby. It's August the 10th. It's 9, 11 p.m. on Eastern Standard Time, and we got one more amazing segment. You know, there is a lot of negative things going on in the news, as we've discovered. You know, you got your politics like your Cuomo's, you got your Karen's, you got your <laughs> pandemic talks, your COVID's. But we're not going to talk about that right now. We're going to do some happy go lucky stuff. Justin Clyde Williams will tell you about it. We're just small town dudes with small town news. Breaking stories of crimes committed you never do. Mind your P's and Q's or they'll cover you. The town may be small, but the news is huge. All right, buddy. Check this out. Coming out of your favorite state. We're back. <laughs> oh, back to Falu Rider. <laughs> we are back. Uh, yeah, so let me ask you this. We asked a question at the beginning of the show. Have you ever been in a food fight? I didn't ever get your... Uh, I have not been in a food fight. I like to eat food, too. Not the food. <laughs> yeah, that is true. Yeah. Only a privileged country like America could With even... Throw food. Yeah. Do you imagine people in Africa Karen, watching that going like... You're throwing it around. Yeah. But yes, um, well, the, you're going to like this story. A couple in Florida was arrested after shoving spaghetti in each other's faces. Isn't that great? <laughs> Apparently, they, they've never seen Lady in the Tramp. That is not <laughs> how you eat spaghetti. The strange altercation happened last Friday in Clearwater, Florida. Oh, that's beautiful, isn't it? Clearwater. Clear that's the where the Hooters originated. <laughs> <laughs> Little tidbit. He knows that yeah. for sure. That's, that's, your, that's your second favorite place. Yes. Uh, yeah, it happened last Friday in Clearwater, Florida, uh, between 45-year-old Stephanie Lanas and 35-year-old Adolfo Rivera inside of their own home. So I like that part. At least they yeah. weren't out in public doing this. You know, yeah. you keep that... That kind of business in your own house. You know what I mean? Yeah. Or a Waffle House. <laughs> <laughs> or an international in house. house. I mean, any kind yeah. of house that uh, it would do that. But not an Olive Garden. You don't want to, You want that at Olive Garden. Not an Italian restaurant. No. It's too dangerous in there. They got them damn pepper grinders. Yeah. Those are like billy clubs. Those yeah. things will hurt you. And they have unlimited breadsticks, so that's just going to keep yeah, coming. Just keep, that's just free just ammo. Throwing right? Them, yeah. <laughs> right. So the couple allegedly got into the spicy argument when they both oh. shoved a plate of spaghetti in each other's faces. Yes, that's amore. <laughs> there they are. Uh, and it started when she said prego. <laughs> and his response was like, uh oh, spaghetti oats? Yeah. And then uh, she al dente his face. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not sure how it started, but a police officer responded to the residence around 1 a.m., and he found the pair still covered in spaghetti. So there's complaints, right? This probably started around 10, and the cops didn't get there to 1, and they're still sitting there covered in spaghetti, uh, listening to Guns N' Roses' The Spaghetti Incident. <laughs> <laughs> Which is weird because they still had an appetite for destruction. Oh. Mark! Yeah. <laughs> the police noted that alcohol was a no. factor. It was a factor. Yes. Can you guess what kind of alcohol it would have been? What is your guess? Mm. It's spaghetti. So what do you think? Tequila what? with... No. Tequila with spaghetti. I, I was going to say a wine. Oh, yeah. It's yes. Italian food. You're right. I, I'm Technically. Wrong. So I was going to say a wine, something from the farms of Boone. (laughs) (laughs) Most likely a Boone's farm wine. You know, I don't know. I don't know what pairs well with spaghetti. (laughs) Maybe a Pinot Noir. They're they're full bodied, and if you're in a fight, that's what you want. Uh, Stephanie and Adolfo were both booked into county jail and charged with domestic battery. Impersonating a three-year-old. Whoa! I'm making that one. That's a no, that's a joke. Yeah, good thing. <laughs> and here's one more. And assault with a sauce. Assault with a sauce. <laughs> they were released uh, on their own recognizance the following day in their own clothes from the previous night. So that is one nasty walk of shame. Yeah. You're walking out a whole day still covered in that mess. Uh, however, check this out. They did not plead guilty to the misdemeanor, and the judge is allowing them to keep in contact while the case proceeds. So that tells me this judge 
He, he's waiting for. He wants round two, yeah. right? Why would you do that? I guess it's a misdemeanor, so. And it's going to happen as soon as one of them says, who's going to clean this mess up? Yeah. Then the next fight will ensue, right? Um, and this isn't the first time that they've been arrested for fighting. They have a history. No. Stephanie was arrested in <laughs> October of 2020 for stabbing Adolfo here in the arm with a steak knife. Yeah. This they poor guy. Some food. They got some food issues. Yeah, he These does. These are foodies. These are foodies. Angry, angry foodies. Angry foodies. And I feel, I mean, he is slowly learning how to eat with this woman, if you think about it. Because he, he stepped away from the steak dinners with knives to a more soft food yeah. like spaghetti. <laughs> Right. Maybe we can make our way down to Jello. Right, a dessert. Jello would be good for next time. Yeah. Adolfo would get less injured. I, I like that. I would suggest a pie to the face. It's a classic yeah, yeah, good. staple of comedy. That's Everyone likes need. a good, timeless classic. Um, I think what we should do is look them up on Facebook. Yeah, and then send them food requests for the next fight. <laughs> you know, hey, <laughs> we'd could you like incorporate to see. some some pudding. You yeah. know, whatever. Um, actually, I think the Food Network should give them a show. This would be great. I would watch this. Yeah. It's, you know, these two in a, a Food Network show. Uh, they're like, I mean, they're really like the modern-day uh, honeymooners. Remember how the yeah. honeymooners would always fight? <laughs> but their names, I think they should change the names. Oh. Steph Getty and Alfredo. Oh. <laughs> on the Food Network. Yeah. Food fights. Food fights. Every night on the Food Network. This with, tonight on, on the Food Network. Yeah. Food I actually, I tried to look him up on Facebook, and I couldn't find uh, Alfredo or Adolfo, <laughs> but I did find Stephanie. And here, can you see that? That is Stephanie's Facebook page, Stephanie Lanas. And let's read her last her last comment said this. You want to read it? Uh, <laughs> no, I do not want to read it. <laughs> can you see it? I can see it. Why don't you want to? I'll tell you what, we'll change it to uh, what was trending yeah. earlier. Yeah. Hi, my name is Stephanie, but my Tiggers call me Steph or that <laughs> cougar. Sexy Stephiva. Sativa. Sativa. I'm that. That's a type of weed. Oh. Sexy Sativa. I'm that. There you go, boys. This is what it boiled down to. They were. They were they got, got the, the munchies. munchies. Yep. Got the munchies. She said something about Prego. He wasn't having it. Then there you go. That's there what you happens. go. So look, Clearwater, Florida. Hey. The town <laughs> might be small. But the spaghetti's everywhere. <laughs> it's a mess. <laughs> the town may be small, but the news is huge. All righty then. We've had an excellent time up in here today. Um, thank you for hitting the share button. We're at 9... One hour and 20 minutes, not too shabby. We were trying to get it at, right at one hour. We're going to work on that. Yes. 62 shares. Thank you, folks. Right. On it's, Facebook. It's never too late to hit the share never button, even late. when you're done. Boom. If you haven't done it yet, wait till the end, hit the share button. Um, but uh, I want to get serious for a second, because for those of you who have been watching this show from the beginning, you know, normally we have... <laughs> We've had two interns, mm -hmm. Elliot and, uh, well, Isaiah is in Virginia, so he's up there working, but Elliot is missing, and there's a reason for that. Sadly, his wife passed away, so Elliot has been busy dealing with funeral arrangements and the family and going through some serious grieving. We, I, 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 Mark, can you answer some basic questions about the cause. I know she died in her sleep, so we don't know exactly what it was yet. Is this correct? That's correct, but they're still waiting on results with that. Uh, okay. I talked to them earlier today. I've been in contact with them ever since, yeah. and uh, uh, two, three times a day. Yeah. And, uh, She's been in here. She's yeah. been on this show, mm -hmm. uh, Linda, and that was Elliot's world. Oh, yeah. I mean, he doted on her, um, took care of her, did her hair, did her makeup. Uh, she had some ailments. Um, and I'm, I'm guessing that's probably what led to it. But if you want to wish uh, Elliot and his family uh, your, your condolences, you can do that on his Facebook page, Elliot Linda McG McGuff. It's right there. There's a picture he posted today of them two holding each other, and that's her as well. I'm not sure who she's with in the other picture there. 
Do you know who that is? I'm not quite yeah. sure either. I didn't recognize him. But uh, rest in peace, Linda, and our thoughts and prayers are with Elliot. And uh, feel free to reach out to him and uh, wish him uh, you know, that as well, and that will make him feel good. All right. Uh, other than that, we had a good show today. I appreciate you all watching. I appreciate you sharing, and I appreciate you rating and reviewing. Uh, don't forget, I'm in Atlanta this weekend. Come see me in Atlanta. I'll be at the Punchline Comedy Club. Uh, me and John Heffern are going to be touring all over Michigan as well after that. Come see us. Uh, we're doing bowling alleys, Howard, Wyoming, Rockford, uh, and then uh, Muskegon at the end. So come check us out there. And... Um, uh, any corrections other than that, guys? Anything I forgot to say or did not talk about? I appreciate you. Yes? No? no we're good. All right. Go. Good. Well, for the Alan Jackson, for Mark Havaball, for Sebastian, I'm John Rape. Bicycle! Well, life on the farm is kind of laid back, but I wouldn't know that I'm from a cul-de-sac. Don't shoot a bike and I don't smoke crack. Thank God I'm country-ish. Well, it's a simple kind of life. Every day we do harm, but I do know a guy with only one arm. Keep your fancy smartphones and your self park cars. Thank God I'm country-ish. Well, I got a podcast that'll make you giggle. It ain't number one. It's right in the middle. The town's not big, but it ain't too little. It's time for country-ish. Hey everybody, it's me again. I just want to say thank you for listening or watching this podcast. You know, we couldn't do this without supporters like you. Oh wait, are you not a supporter? Well, you could be. It's real simple. Go to countryishpodcast.com. Click on the word support. That will take you to our Patreon page. That's our support page. And from there, you can support us in many different ways. There's uh, different levels. You got $5 and up. You got Pewter Pro, Rhinestone Level, Executive Zirconia, all the way up to Platinum Elite. And all of them come with different rewards. We're talking hats, T-shirts, ginger beard masks, even be a guest on the show. You got to check out our Patreon page. Go to countryishpodcast.com, click on support, and thank you. a spicy food check out john reap's hickory hot sauce coming soon hit the share button and stop